Before I can start copying my pieces onto particles, I first need to have proper pieces rather than these extruded ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this guy, uh, the original one sort of, put it down as such, and let's have a look at it. It's just flat, so I'm just going to make that one unreferenced, dive inside, add a poly extrude to it, so poly extrude, right? Let's put this was something like 0 0.3, so it's going up a little bit. Um, one other thing as well was don't forget to output the back as well, if you want that. And let's go up again. So now we've got our pieces, and there is no, you know, there is no height extrusion or distance-based extrusion going on anymore. So just plain pieces. So let's pre let's prepare them now to send them to to pops. Okay. So what I need is I will be needing. Uh, all of this, so I'm just going to copy this. Right. So that's all good. Um, another thing that I want to do is I'm going to call this two pops. Oops. Right. And I need to regroup them because I want to I want them basically I want every piece to be inside of its own group so in order to do that I want to use the connectivity right um, the connectivity in combination with the partition so that at the moment I've deleted all my groups right over there they're just grouped by color a group by color but not all the primitives that have this color are inside of that group so I'm gonna have to redo that but this time instead of grouping by color I'm gonna group based upon their connectivity so which means this face belongs to that piece so all of those faces that belong to that piece are inside of that um, group alright so in order to do that just add a connectivity this will generate a new attribute which is a class attribute and we will be using that this attribute we have to change it to primitive though yeah. and we will be using that inside of a um, partition so now this is where we check for the connectivity and this is where we group based upon this connectivity so we can say something like um, piece underscore and then dollar class yeah. and if we just reference this now you can kind of see piece underscore zero piece one two three and so on and it's got all the necessary primitives inside of it and then we're sending it to pops okay so Let's go back up and let's make a new geometry object specifically for these, this pop operation. So lay down new geometry. Let's call it geo um, pops pieces. Right. Dive inside. I don't need the file sub. And I'm just going to make another, do another object merge. And I'm going to get my piece, which is inside of my fracture. And it is the one two pops. Note that the reason why these are on the top is because they are in, in capitals. Yeah? So that's why, I mean, it's quite an easy workflow to name them correctly. Okay, accept that. And now we're basically, we've got our fractured geometry. So if I just create quickly a, a null and call this fractured geo, and let's make this visible. Yeah. That should be our geometry right there. So Let's have a look if that's coming through properly. Yes, looks like it is. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a copy stamp and deletion operation so that I've, I can isolate every single piece, right? Every one of these pieces and get its center point yeah, and emit particles from that center point. Every center point will emit one particle. Then I'm going to copy every chunk onto every particle, right? So let's do that. First of all, let's set up this operation. So I'm going to have to delete a bunch of pieces. Yeah? So delete the non-selected pieces. And I'm going to need a copy stamp operation. Right? And let's just set this for, for now to something like 10. And then we'll change this afterwards. Let's turn on our stamping. Stamp inputs. Input a copy number. Use $CY, which will reference any one of these copy numbers, right? And make sure stamp input is turned on so it's upstream, right? Okay, so now let's start referencing that. What I want to do is use that uh, expression again with the prim group list. So I'm going to bring up 
my expression so let's start typing um, I'm gonna use my prim group mask and the one that I want to reference is my null fracture geo right so all the primitive groups that are in there which ones well the ones that start with piece I just uh, name them like that in the other uh, in the other partitioning with the connectivity um, let's have a look and that should be it so that's gonna return me one long string with all these piece groups in it so let's do the same thing put an argument expression around this right and the argument that I want right it's not gonna be 0 1 or 2 I mean it is but I'm gonna use that based upon my stamping value of my copy so let's start stamping stamp type in copy 1 the value that I want is copy num and basically if it's not there then just use minus 1 okay that's fine so let's apply and accept that oh um, one more thing is the backticks again so just put in the backticks let's have a look okay so now I've got a couple of pieces not all of them yet because I've got you know only 10 pieces so as you can see there's more or less pieces now let's start by working with you know a few amount of pieces so that if we make a mistake in the meantime you know it's not gonna take ages to update or whatever okay so what I want to do now is I want to instead of have these pieces at the end of it I want to have points with their you know that represent the center points of these pieces so the way that I can do that is I'm going to add new points so let's add a new point as such oops not on the template yeah okay so enable this point and I want to add it on the centroid so CEX dollar CEY dollar CEZ right so this point now is being added on the centroid so if we just have a quick look in wireframe mode hmm. right there it is this point one three four it's at the center of the geometry right okay so but I've got st I've still got all the other geometry so I kinda wanna get rid of all the other geometry so a clean way of doing that is by grouping all the other geometry first and then deleting it afterwards so let's just group this let's call this um, I don't know uh, something like remainder so this will reference the name and let's call this group junk something like that I don't need those so and I'm gonna put this two points so this will get me all the points as such selects all the points I'm gonna wire it into my add so at the moment there's more points so there's like uh, 134 points in this group junk yet there are 135 points because of that middle point and I'm gonna delete all the points that I don't need which are basically inside of my junk group so let's delete selected group junk right so let's get rid of that and this needs to be points yeah? and all that I'm left with is this one point right so let's feed it into our copy and let's have a look so as you can see now, you know, there's like our few points, right? There's not enough, but you know, we can increase this. We can match this to however many we need. So let's do that. So let's get this expression, copy the entire thing, bring up an expression editor. Let's get rid of that value. Put this down and let's change this again to count. Since it's not a string anymore, we can just change that this is all fine I don't need to stamp so that can all be gone as such okay so this will return me the exact amount of chunks that I have so let's say accept all right and let's have a look so as you can see I've got more chunks there where the center points are you know and another one there you know more points so that's all good so and they're all like aligned because they're all in the in the same center so I, I can start feeding this into my particle system now so let's do that into a pop network as such let's jump inside lay down a source All right. say we're gonna be using the first context to emit particles from 
Also, very important to have points ordered. Do not change this to random because this will have to cor this needs to correspond to um, the chunks that will be emitted. Uh, sorry, to the to the chunks that are will be copied on top. So basically, I want to activate this only at frame one. So if this is equal to frame one, activate it. How many points? Well, as much points as there are. So dollar MPT. I don't need a constant activation, so I'm going to turn that off. Right. Um, well, I mean, depending on what your needs are, you can add a birth group and preserve that group as well, so that you can manipulate it later on. But I don't need that, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Okay. Now I need a way to sort of um, affect my particles, right? So as you can see over there, I just rewinded my thing, and there's my particles. You know, they're they're all sitting there. I'm gonna select them based upon a uh, say a torus that is increasing in radius. So I'm going to create a new torus and let's just put it there in the second input and if I increase my radius as such, right, I can start using that to select points yeah, inside of a group operation. So let's put in a little expression in there, something like to have it move over time, so a bit fast times 0.2 so it's going to grow. Yeah, So that's good. One more just kind of cleaning up thing is just change this from polygons to NURBS so you got a nice round torus. Um, yeah, that's about good. Alright, maybe let's... Yeah, this is just really small things, but let's just center it so it's kind of, you know, gonna be starting off with that center, center area. That'll be quite cool. Alright, so let's group them now. Uh, back into POPs, group them. Oops. Come on. And I'm gonna name this. I'm gonna name this um, uh, up force group. So I'm gonna apply a force to the particles that are currently going up. So something like GRP up. Uh, what I want is I want to define it based upon the bounding box. So the bounding type I'm gonna change to bounding object, and the kind of bounding object that I want, right, will need to be that torus. So let's grab that torus and accept. Right? Okay. So just have a let's check quickly. Rewind this play. Let's check. Um where is my group? Hmm. Ah of of course enable them. Uh let's rewind and let's play. So there should be some particles inside of there. So 25 particles in this group up. Make sure you enable it. Okay, I'm done. gonna create a down group in the same fashion. Just a down group, group down. And the only different thing that I'm gonna do here is turn on preserve group so that the, the particles within will be, um, you know, staying in there and apply a different force to that. Now, if you are confused about what this does, there is another tutorial that goes into more detail into these this setup. So. You know, I'm not going to go too deep into this. So for the upwards force, so force up, we'll be using the upwards group. So group up, force up could be something like 20. Um, maybe give it a little bit of uh, an amplitude in Y as well. So just so it varies a little bit. So copy this, put it in there in the Y amplitude, paste a relative reference, right? But let's say we're only going to be using something like 20% of that value. So it's going to differ with 4. So whatever that changes, that's going to change. That's going to drive all my particles up. Yeah, as you can see, at least all the ones that are in inside of the up group. So as I play this and this thing grows, it just pushes them up. Right. Same thing with the down group. So let's do that again. Another force. Something like down. Let's put in the down group and let's put in gravity minus a 9.81, right? Okay, now this thing will need, oops, this thing will need something to collide with. Uh, boop, don't need that. So, up, and they're falling down, right? So that's all good. All I need now is a collision event where I sort of stop them as they go. So I'm gonna quickly create a new grid, sort of a ground plane to use as a collision object. You can plug it into input 3. 
don't necessarily need to plug in you know that one but then I know that they are related related to that so let's use the third one right that's my grid right there so that should catch them all okay uh, at the moment the behavior is set to die so I want them to stop yeah. so instead just lie on the grid and that's fine um, okay let's add a rotation to it so that basically oh maybe a drag as well anyway let's uh, add see if that has a lot of influence Ooh, not too much I think what has more influence is if I start to use a bit of time in inside of there so if I just say multiply this with a fit function which will use the time so say something that goes between 0 and 100 will be useful okay so as this thing goes from 0 to 100 I want to multiply it by something like going from one so this is the full force to something small like 0 0.1 so what this will do literally is as the force as if the time is sort of zero right and it goes up to 100 um, we can change this to 50 this force is gonna get weaker so it'll basically it'll look as if the there's a fall off going on you know these points are not as much you know as not are not as uh, as strong another thing we can do if we want this a bit stronger that fall off effect is just put it to the power 2 so we've gotten instead of a linear effect we now have a smooth fall off All right. and let's have a look boom and now these almost don't move anymore they just move a little bit notice one small last thing that I'm gonna point out is that as the points are born sort of they are a little bit above the ground now my grid is resting on the ground if you want to change that just you know raise your collision grid a little bit I kinda like this effect where they kinda you know fall back onto the ground sort of fall back into a different position okay so then one final thing is a little bit of rotation I'm going to add so let's add some rotation um, in the angle I'm going to use their ID to randomize it so the particles have a unique number which is their ID and let's randomize that and then say this is the amount of degrees so this will return a number between 0 and 1 and then say we're gonna multiply that by a number between 0 and 15. Sometimes what you can do, which is sometimes recommended, is just add a number, something like, I don't know, 12.3, whatever, something random. Um, this would be a seed, but know that it has a, um, a floating point value uh, so, so that this ID is a bit more randomized rather than having full integer values. Okay, in the axis part, I'm going to do the same sine and cosine operation so that as I did with um, the original splitting operation, so again, using rand, I'm going to use their ID again, so dollar $ID, but just, um, you know, like put it in times 180 degrees this time because that's the angle they are, you know, and the same thing that we did basically with um, the uh, original splitting. What I might do again is something like 12.3 there and then just make it really random so that it's different for the rotate Z as well and I want to use the cosine for the rotate Z so now I'm in the rotate Z and let's change this to I don't know something like 5.3 whatever something I mean this is just random number it doesn't really matter and let's go up alright so this part is complete so now let's finish the other part the, the second part sort of right so now we need to extract every individual piece so we're gonna have to copy again yeah. and we're gonna have to copy this time onto the templates so let's start stamping as well say so copy num now I'm not gonna use dollar cy but instead dollar pt which will basically use the point the template point right and it'll um, yeah well basically it'll go through that way Let's have a look. I'm just a bit. Yeah, no, that's fine then. Group down. Okay, so I need to delete everything else that I don't need again. So let's just copy this. Delete every point. And I need to change my expression this time. So I'm going to bring up an expression editor and change my copy num to 2. Right? So to something like this. I left it at copy num the name and yeah this is all this is all fine so just apply that except right 
and if we now apply it to that then it will copy the pieces onto the geometry but there's a bit of uh, problems going on at the moment um, basically as you can see the the um, the pieces are not copied correctly because they're not first of all they're not centered so we need to transform them we're gonna need to add a transform right and put them at the origin right so that we don't have additional transformation going on so let's put them at the origin so I'm just gonna say translate this translation operation so see there's like this in, in this piece over there and I want to put it at the origin so the easiest way to do that is by using minus dollar C X minus dollar C Y and minus dollar C Z right and now my piece is at the origin now one more thing that I need to do is orient it so that it is kind of pointing in the Z direction because that's the way the copy shop expects my geometry so I'm gonna add a new transform and in the rotate I'm gonna rotate it about 90 degrees right like that and another 90 degrees over there Oops. alright so let's have a look how this piece is looking now alright so there's the Z axis and it's the piece is now pointing in that in that direction so let's have a look at our uh, copy okay slightly better so we're starting to get some pieces going but there's still some problems going on with the um, with the vectors so I'm gonna have to override some of the attributes so I'm quickly going to do that so just point and I'm go going to override the velocity vector and the uh, oops, particle and the up vector so these two I'm just gonna put them at um, fixed values so 0, 1, uh, 0 let's just have a look at them instead so let's just have a look at these guys instead and the up vector as well 0, 1, 0 right. and let's have a look at that now okay so at the moment you know these pieces have been you know rotated up and sort of chunkified so what I want to do is the rotation right I only want to apply the rotation you know as the pieces go through I only want to apply the rotation to the to the um, to the group that has been selected by the torus so inside of the rotation let's change this source group to group um, yeah group up that'll do okay and let's have a look now okay so this is this is better this is clean so this is what more what we expected so as you can see now as this ring will start to grow right you can kind of start to see how the um, how the chunks are being you know lifted up a little bit into the air and then uh, being rotated and cracking cracking the surface open really so that's quite a cool cool way of doing things without really having to go into dops um, uh, one more thing that I'd like to sh show as well is that you know if you don't want to um, if you don't want that come on if you don't want them to go up too much I, I mean I think personally that that's quite a cool thing to have them go up a little bit but then you can add just another point just like we did before in the other example just add another point and uh, put their ty to zero right so now they're just all at zero and the only thing they will get is their rotations yeah. Okay, but I'm gonna leave it at that and uh, move on to the next example, which will be using dubs. So we're gonna sort of put this one straight up and shoot some spheres through it, so as bullets going through glass or a wall or something like that. Okay.